Hi, I'm Maureen Wilkinson, and I, this is my show. It's just a piece of paper. Named of that because my students sometimes would get awfully upset if something happened to the painting. And I said, just a piece of paper, but they never thought that was as funny as I did. I've been away for a while, but I'm back now, springtime. Very glad to be here. Um, I don't know if you can see this. I, I want to show you something uh, that makes this kind of worthwhile, very worthwhile. Today, one of my painting students um, went through a lot of trouble to get to see me physically and to give me this card for Easter. And it is painted by her. Now, there's not much that could make me happier than that. So if you just pick up a little watercolor, um, and this is just a little watercolor paper, it becomes a card. And you can make people so happy by painting just, just a little Pisithia, anything. But I promise you, people will be very thrilled. It happens all the time. I am going to do uh, hydrangeas today. Um, I've been doing them a lot in my oil oils. Um, now I'm going to try a little watercolor. Uh, if any of this is in our way, well, tell me. All right, so what I'm going to do is try in my composition, place my composition. Composition is the way everything is arranged on the paper. Um, I usually put an X right in the middle of my paper. So I'll tell you, the center of interest does usually does not go right there. Uh, then very often I'll divide it into quarters. If people need to see where things go, it's kind of like a, a large grid square, which works too. All right, so this is my favorite part. Nothing's happened. <laughs> I can go anywhere I want to. So I'm just going to lightly with a pencil kind of draw in shapes, just shapes. If you can draw a circle, a square, a rectangle, any of the shapes, you can draw anything. I always refer to the world basically or anything you're trying to draw as a jigsaw puzzle. And you, if you fit the pieces together, you can draw anything. For instance, uh, the tape. Now, if I, the tape is what I want to draw. So this is my positive shape. However, the inside of the tape is my negative shape. The around part is the negative shape. And this shape and this shape are just as important if you fit them together like a jigsaw puzzle. There's nothing you can't draw. It says here in small print. So I'm gonna just take, I'm gonna do three, three hydrangeas. Uh, just because it's an odd number and that's, I like to I like to paint big. Oh, I mean, this you can put them in a vase. You can put them with just stems. I mean, anything you want to. You can do smaller flowers, more vases, um, what, whatever you want. This is this is your your game now. And the more you can do to make it your own, the better. It's just more fun that way. Everybody has their own style, or gets one <laughs> eventually. Okay, these are my two favorite brushes. I guess I told you that before. Uh, a Simmons and this, these are both the same size, like an inch and a half or something, but those are wash brushes. We cover lots of area. Uh, this is a Skoda. The Skodas are a little pricey, but not a, horribly, but you're going to pay a little more for them, but I've had this one for maybe five years, and I don't think I've done a painting without it the whole time. Oh, it is just wonderful. I'm going to mix up a little paint now. Um, I also have Simmons brushes. Uh, I have a lot of toys. Oh, I'm going to take some ultramarine. No, it's not ultramarine. Then I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. We're off to a good start. Because I love the blue hydrangeas. Uh, I'll start with the blues. You can use a little cerulean, which is another one of my favorite colors. Probably my favorite, favorite. And that's a good little start. So what you want to do is, I have the three circles. Just 
sort of change them a little bit. You're going to pretend, well, pretty good. There's a light coming from this way. So if I'd had a hydrangea here, the light side, the medium side, and the dark side. Cast shadow onto this one, cast shadow onto that one. Light, 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 medium, dark. You're, you have to have those values in everything you paint, and it will make everything very interesting. I mean, you don't have to because it's monochromatic, but it certainly makes it more interesting. So I'm going to start here and just get a few little shapes going. Just take your brush and scoot it around a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to change the shapes every now and again. I can't paint without this brush. There we go. <laughs> this is my favorite. Now when I come over to the light side, if I was doing oils, which I've been doing all week, I would just use white paint. But in acrylics, you, I mean, in, <laughs> I gave that away, in watercolor, you just use more water to get something lighter. The uh, big shows right now um, are accepting acrylic and watercolor combined. That's even American watercolor does that, which was a huge change for most of the time. It was transparent watercolor. I don't bother showing. So now they let them in, and ah, it's good. But here you see, I'm going to use a, a cerulean blue and still get my shapes in. Sometimes I'll just take my brush and do a little of this back and forth, back and forth. Somewhere in this flower, <laughs> I usually actually put one little flower, petals, the four little petals. It's almost like a game with me to see if people can find it because everything else is a big mess. All right, now I'm going to drop a little of the dark in here because you still have to have the light, medium, and dark in each flower. And this will be more of the medium. So you have a little cerulean and a little ultra. And it's more of a medium color. So the dark, dark goes here. I'm just using blues right now. I, know I, I can bring everything down in a few minutes with us. I'm adding some browns or some purples and all that. Sometimes I just roll the brush like this. And then just sometimes just swish it back and forth. Sometimes people paint like this to keep the all the uh, paint down. I've got my paper tipped up, which I always do. And I'm going to remember, hopefully, to use a few little lights. Leave some light. Uh, again, in oil or acrylic, you can just use the white paint. But watercolor. Unless you want to use acrylic, that's a good seagull, see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, let's continue on here. A little more cerulean. I have some manganese on here someplace, too. That's a nice color if you ever want to try it. And just making the shapes of the flowers. They're not going to be circles, They're complete circles. They are circular, and I'm going to go fairly slowly so I can pay good close attention. Yeah, that's coming. I have this. I've got to give it to my seagull. You see it? Okay. I like to spatter a lot. Janet Rogers is the one that showed me how to do that. <laughs> it's nothing much more fun than that. Just land some paint on what you're doing, and you can mush it around if you want to. Oh, let's see, what is this? Ah, let's put a little of this in. Now I'm going to go really drop some uh, darker paint over here. That's good. Yeah, and then you'll see the contrast of the dark, the medium, and the light, which is necessary. And leave a few little lights, Maureen. Okay. I love painting. It always makes you happy, you know, if you've got something going on and 
you start painting, you, you get a time out, you know, you can't think of anything else but <laughs> that. It's great. All right, now let's just for fun grab a little, ah, maybe a little something crimson over here. Get a little purple or very, see I'm darkening that blue by putting a little red in it. This is called alizarin crimson, and it's a beautiful color all by itself. But if I really want this to be darker, you see how that does it? It just gives you this wonderful dark. Light here, medium, dark, dark. There you go. I'm trying to put a few little other things out. All right, oh, this is so much fun. You are gonna love doing this. Oh, here's a turquoise, try that. Ooh, I use that one when I go to Florida, visit my brother, because in Florida you need turquoise paint. Okay, a little more spatter. All right, let's let him sit there for a minute. Now it's gonna dry lighter. Watercolors always dry lighter. I had a class this week where um, I was trying to have uh, the pink and the blue combined in a uh, sky. Uh, it's not that easy. And so I said, no, just use a lot of water. So by the time we were all through and it dried, all you could see was nothing. It, <laughs> I didn't take much, that wasn't so good. But it does dry lighter, so you just have to know that. If you really want something dark, make it dark to start. Okay. All right, now, my next favorite color is pink. Like a watercolor again. I can't use pink. I have the Janet Rogers purple, which comes out to a beautiful pink. Uh, and it's, pink needs a lot of water because it is, you just want to lighten up and see how this goes. All right, that's a pretty good color to start with. And, you know, just, you can just take your time with these flowers. They've got to dry before you can do much of anything. So just relax and enjoy it. And, you know, hold your brush like this once in a while, flip it around and hold it like that. Roll it. God, I sound like I'm baking a cake. All right, I'm on this side, I'm gonna go in a little darker. Hmm, darker, darker. I'm gonna go in very, yeah, that's darker. Light's coming this way, big flowers out here, cast shadow. This flower, the blue one, is gonna cast a shadow on the pink flower. Ha <laughs> it didn't get too much bleed there, I got a little bit, but that's all right. I, I, like, I like it when it bleeds in like that. So that's the shadow. Now you gotta be a little subtle about this and just go, go work over here for a minute so that dries. And I'm just gonna be darker here, of course, because that's the back. Sometimes, you know, you can just take a brush and Kind of do this just to get petals. I like that. Oop. I didn't like that shape. It was too circular, too round. Okay, now let's see. What other little trouble can I get into here? Um, <laughs> ooh, that's a beauty. Let's see what this little red wants to do for me. Hoo-hoo, that's red. Now we'll just put that into some of the light paint. Look at the face I've got. Two eyes, nose, the mouth. Watch out for that stuff. But if you can find it before somebody else does, you're all set. And leave a little, leave a little white. And I'm gonna go in with some medium. Uh, I am gonna put a little of this uh, cat scarlet in here. It's just going to add that little touch of something extra, i.e. orange-ish. 
to the whole thing, because you don't want the whole thing to be exactly the same color. Boring. See, I've got a, just a little bit here. When you see me do this, what I'm doing is I load my brush, I'm ready to go, tap out a lot of the water on the base of this brush, so that when I go in, I've got just paint, or mostly paint, and, uh, All right, like that, like that's how that's coming. And now let's get some more light pink. That's where I started with the alizarin. There's a million pinks you can buy. There's Rose Dorio and, but with watercolor, you just need to use your water and some, some red that you like. Alizarin, I always have alizarin on my palette. Sometimes I'll bring in a few. <laughs> this flower is growing very big. I have a funny feeling someone's watering it. Or I can't see them. Okay. And just a little more. Now, I'm not too worried about the fact that it's a little dark because it's going to dry lighter. Show you another trick. Let's say, <laughs> don't tell anyone I'm just doing this though. This is our secret. Paper towel. changing the shape a little bit. Not really supposed to do that. But every now and then, you know, you gotta, gotta do your own thing. All right, a little more alizarin crimson. Look how, when you, you spatter in there, oh, there's nothing more fun than spattering. You also can, if you really wanna have a real big time here, splatter like that. A spatter. I don't mean my students say splatter. It's spatter. <laughs> you just whap this. The top brush is loaded. The other one just holding it, and you get these lovely, oh, little Janet Rogers. Usually play a song. It's usually jingle bells. Everyone that paints with me knows that. I'm going to sneak in a little of Janet's violet. Whoa, I've got pretty colors in there. Ooh, that's beautiful. Well, so much for pink, right? <laughs> I love it. Okay, now, this one is in front of that one casting the shadow. But, uh, yeah, no. See, what I just did is it caused a blossom. Blossoms are things, and never mind, these are blossoms, but. In a painting, you usually don't want blossoms, unless you're doing flowers. And what that does is when, well, let me show you, when uh, your paint is starting to dry, oh, I could do a beauty right here, um, and you put new paint in, the new paint is gonna push all that old stuff away and you're gonna have this horrible blossom. <laughs> there it comes, see? Yeah, that's a... Uh, I'm even going to let that touch a little bit because that's going to give a real nice. Oh, that's good. Oh, I love this one. It looks like an ice cream cone. Just going to mush it around a bit. Trying to get some circular shapes back in. All righty. Now. Third one I've been doing is whitish. Now this is a little harder. Uh, look, I don't look at that. That's wrong. See, Shoo, out of there. If you get it right away. You're usually pretty okay. And to do the well, I don't know. Maybe I'll do one this more. See the blossom. That's what I'm talking about, right there. Just pushes the paint away. I think I'm going to a little more purple instead of the white because it's a little harder in watercolor. So we're going to put in a, oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. I love purple. You can get so many different shades of purple. You can get uh, violet and I mean, look, look at all the colors right here. All can be purples. Just, 
Another little trick. Oh boy, I'm full of tricks today. Half the paint goes into the red, and half the paint goes into the blue, and you get this lovely mixture, and you go in. And I'm going to try and leave a little more white as I go along here. Oh, wow. Whew, that is, I don't like, don't like that edge. By edge. I just say it's being softened. So I'm going to go back and get some more purple. Oh, choices, choices. Ooh, that's beautiful. Look at this. That is just beautiful. Taking this one way over here. Roll it. And around we go. Oh, isn't that pretty, huh? And I've got a little um, ultramarine in there, too. Oh, yeah. This is going to be my favorite one, I think. Oh, there are so many colors that can go in there. I mean, you can put a little cerulean in, in here and let it run. Let it just run around. And blend. Blend in here. In a minute, I'm going to stop and go into my uh, leaves, because when you're doing flowers, you want to get to your leaves pretty soon because what they do is really frame the flowers for you. Put your roadblocks up. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Take a brush and just pop at it like that. <laughs> you should see people when I do this in class. They're sitting in front of me in their best clothes, which is never a good idea. Oh dear, here we go. Round and round. Hmm. Okay, let's let's find it now. What I'm going to do next is try a few leaves. I have broken my rules of painting, which was don't buy green. Because everybody had it anyway. I still like to make my own with blue and yellow, but if you want to use, there's, there's a few greens that are pretty nice. And if you use it right out of the tube, if you, if you use it right out of the tube, I'll be able to tell you. Anybody will be able to tell. Um, so add a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit of something else. And then, then it's not so bad. Um, Jack Flynn, at the end of his life, God bless him, um, was using olive green. His paintings are a little uh, fall-like, anyway. So that really works for him. Some people like sap green. I do have an emerald green out here that I use for the, um, when I'm painting a wave, the wave comes up like that, I'll have the emerald green. <clears throat> it's a beautiful color. Oh, I, I use that on just, just a few other, few other things, but. So, you know, it's, it's experimenting and trying different colors and trying different greens and don't worry if you don't get it. And the best piece of advice is use a, just a, use a little bit, make a puddle of green. Then make a puddle of yellow. Mix them together. Too light, okay? Instead of taking a whole big glob of paint, just try a little at a time, and that way, you won't end up with a, oh, that's pretty. You see all those pretty greens in there? Just with the yellow and blue. Uh, this is gamboge, very hard to come by right now. If you get gamboge, two to one, it's gonna be a different color. But you can make your own with yellow and uh, yellow ochre. It'll come out to be gamboge anyway. But I guess they can't get it anymore. I am reading a book, and the name of the book is Color. And a friend of mine's loaned it to me. It takes forever to read it because it's defining where each color came from and when and how they had to go about getting color. I would not have been a painter way back when. I mean, it was unbelievable what they had to do 
from the Siennas to, oh, they would use bugs and they would use all these very strange things. And uh, it was, it's a wonderful book if you like color and really want to understand the background of it. I recommend this book highly. It's just, you just sometimes can't believe that, that this is what really happened, but it is, it's a great book. All right, back we go. Oh, that's nice. See what I did there was like, oops, <laughs> just put a little of the green in and then drop some dark into it. There we go. Looks like, <laughs> looks like a crocodile. See, two eyes. Here's his mouth. These are things that you have to look for in your paintings. I know it sounds a little weird, but if you end up in a show or wanting to sell one of your paintings and you've got a crocodile looking at you, it's not going to be so good. If you want to, you can do a little of this. You know how you do the lines. I just take the paint out. And I don't like to do too much because it, it, it can get very tacky if you do too much. It's going to look silly, but you can do a little bit, whatever you want. Okay, so we've got a nice stationary green right there. Oh, that is nice. Um, let's put one here. The petals on these have a nice pointed shape and then just come up like that. Um, this brush, as you can see, is not holding a lot of paint. It's not very fat, but it's it's a nice brush. However, I find it easier just to grab this and a little of that. Oh, it's a different color. Let's try that. That's nice. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I love. Oh, I love that. Leave it. I'll leave it, leave it, leave it. I'm going to leave it. Hopefully, I'm going to leave it with some of these uh, whites in it. I, I really like that. That's nice. And I'll do another down here. Maybe we'll give it a stem even. So these are really growing from something. And okay. And maybe a little. Oh, no, 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 no. Getting wild here. <laughs> if this is wild, I'll take it. Ooh, too much blue. Let's go, let's go show. This is a uh, yellow ochre. The, the, the ways they develop these colors. It, you didn't have the little nice store you can go in and just buy them. You had to make them or get them someplace or buy them from f somebody who, who made them. It's, wow, I don't like that color at all. So I'm just going to pick. This is what you do when you don't like a color. Why? Don't waste your time. If you don't like the color there, you are not going to like the color there. That, I know. Let's get another little leaf in here. Just a little tiny stem like this, and then you press it down on your brush and bring it up. You press it down on your brush and pick it up. You can pick it right up like that if you want. And then in here, we'll get a little more dark. And I'm going to put it on the top because it's running down toward me. I like to make I, I like to make things touch each other. It just seems better composition to me. Okay, what to do with that? Uh, that's just begging for trouble, I think. I'll just wet the inside and see what it does. Go for it. If I don't like it, I'll just paint right over it. That's pretty good. I like it. Okay, uh, let's see now. Um, I might put some more greens in. A couple of my paintings, I put a vase in. About now, a glass vase you can see through, and that was great. But. I'm going to go back. How dry is this? Not so dry. I thought for sure the uh, lights here would give me dry, dry, dry. But I'm going to go back now and get a few more shapes in some of these shapes of the petals. Not all of them. Oh, here's my perfect one. <laughs> but just. Like in here, where I took that out, 
You can just go put a little shape right in there. There you go. That's nice. Okay, and so darker, darker, as my buddy Jack Flynn used to say, if you ever, ever studied with Jack Flynn, and I know a lot of people have, you're very fortunate. He was wonderful. I, I didn't know that he had died until recently. I just Googled him and, boy, we had fun. Though. We had fun. And when you, with painters, I mean, if you want to take up painting, I'll tell you, they're very nice people. <laughs> Painters have fun, and they're nice to each other, and uh, oh, you might always find a one or two you're not thrilled with, but pretty much really good people. I'm gonna sneak some yellow right in here. Do not ask me why. Oh, look, I see, ha ha. It's my, it's my cure for everything in a painting. If I have a painting and I don't like the way it's going and I think, oh, yeah, I can't stand this thing, I'll put yellow on it. And almost every time, it's the click. It makes it all better. When I was doing a hydrangea in oil yesterday, um, it, it was a lot like this. Oh. And one of the backgrounds I used on one of them was pure black. It's beautiful, because it popped them right out. But I had this whole thing going, and I thought, Try something else. So I used yellow. It was gorgeous. So when in doubt, see that little bit of yellow? That just adds such warmth. That's nice. Oh dear, I do love painting. All right, here we go. Blue. Ha ha ha. Now this, some of these petals have kind of glomped, glomped together. So what we're going to do is just go back and I'm not going to cover this whole thing up. I'm just going to go a little, the circular shapes. Some of them, you, you want to leave some of that wonderful background right in there. Let it do its own work for you. But sometimes you can just, like when you come over to the light side, just kind of go around the shapes. Yeah, that's nice. Like this. Nice, I like it. Oh, when in doubt, spatter. There we go. The bigger the brush, the bigger the spatter. That's like saying it's just a piece of paper, but it's true. Oh, look at that. Look at that. See, I'm getting up because this is pretty dry. It's damp. If you want to know if your painting is dry, feel it with the back of your hand. Um, if it is cold, it is still wet. You will know. If you, when I go into paintings, I'm very happy if they're damp like this because the paint just does what it's supposed to. But if you want dry, and very often you have to have dry, of course. Um, just feel it with the back of your hand so you don't leave fingerprints. And wait for it to be warm and dry. Oh, I'm liking this. Okay, I love that one. <laughs> oh boy. Make myself so happy so easily. There we go. And a little more purple. Ooh, that's pretty. It's, you know, right here I'm discovering a lot of colors. I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen every time I do that, but I put a little this, a little that, a little this, a little that, and I get the beautiful colors. Don't ask me how I did it. That would be hard. Okay, look at that. Ooh. Oh, I love color. Look, oh, man, this is, oh, that is yummy. I'm even going to stick a little of this in here. I like it so much. Round. Like you're painting the letter C almost. Now back to some blue, I think. Come on, blue. There you go. Ooh. I'm going to mix that in with the purple. Get a nice shadow here. Now, now because it's dry, the shadow, you can see the shadow of the 
flowers from up here. Oh, that's nice. All right, I'm not sure <laughs> what I did here. This is, let's, let's blend this in a little bit more. There, it's a little bit too kooky. Okay, and then this will come down. Well, I've turned it into another blue hydrangea, but that's okay. They're pretty. Oh, wow. A few little different colors in here. Isn't that pretty? Oof. Only thing I don't like is right here, the break. So I'm just going to push it around. Sometimes you can just shove your paint. Push it. And if this is too dark and you want to lighten it, sop it up. Huh? Good. Okay. Oh, I like in this. All right. Now, um, check your shapes. For instance, on this one, maybe you want a few more. Oh. Uh, positive, obvious shapes. Not, not a lot, but enough. Enough to make it pretty darn sure what it is you're painting. We've got this one under control. It's beautiful. It's wet. I don't know if I have any places left where I can give it a little more punch, but even if you do a little a little purple in there. That's nice. This needs this needs to dry right here. This needs to dry, uh, and then we can go back to it. I'll just take some of it out so it'll dry up faster. Oh, that is so pretty. Now let's see. Um, see, this is always the hard time for me. Background. The last time I did it, I had four different backgrounds in. And lighten this up a little bit. And as I told you, I picked the yellow. Ah, that's so pretty. Um, you can do a light blue. You can't go wrong with that. Mm, more blue. I'm looking for darks in Vs. There are little places. One of my students, I was looking for the Vs and something. She's a very good artist, too. Yeah, see the difference when you throw those darks in there? That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Nothing wrong with a little power like that. And you can see this, this little floret here and here. And the power behind them of this dark is beautiful. Oh my, okay. <laughs> it just dry. Oh, this is almost dry. <sighs> Background. Um, you're always safe with a safe color like blue. If you want to put a pretty blue in there, very hard to go wrong. Oh, you can put dark, dark, dark. You could put orange, yellow, green. Most people usually end up settling for a, a light blue. I think it just is, it's, it's a safety, a safety measure. But, here, I've got a little more shape of these little petals in here. Not too many, just to let you know what we're painting. And I could do that. Not dry yet. Okay, I'll do you last. Oh my. Um, I phew. This is a hard choice, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I do, just so you'll know. You don't have to uh, stick to. Your, stick to something you decide and if you don't like it. Uh, that's a little Payne's Gray stuck back in there, I think. Payne's Gray, tough color. Use it sparingly. Let's see if I could, I could go around here and just have a whole dark background. And that would be very effective. Or I've got cobalt blue here. 
How about a little cobalt? That's a great color. That might be it. A dark blue, you know? That's what I'm going for. Sorry. Brown. Yeah, I didn't think I didn't think I was gonna pick that one, but uh, sometimes you just have to put it down. And if you really, I mean, it's beautiful. There's just no question. I like to kind of scooch my paint around, that's an artistic word. Um, I, I don't need it perfect, I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be exciting and moving and And with your background, all you need to do, let's say this flower is not right or something, go and paint around it, and you've moved the flower without ever touching it. That makes sense, like if you want to come in here with blue and change that shape of that flower, you've just done it. Here's the new shapes. So I'm going to just scrumble a little blue in here. Another good lesson right here. I've got two sides to worry about. So I want to go this way first. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet this. And that is my placeholder. When I go back, because it's nice and wet, I'm not going to have lost my soft edges and have a big hard edge there. So I'm going to go in here. I paint fast. I think sometimes you need to, especially on backgrounds, if depending on drying time. Every, you know, oil painters don't care because it doesn't matter. Okay, I really like that. I might even throw a little purple in it somewhere. Come around that leaf. Oh yeah, this is good. Okay. You can see how careful I'm being. No. But see, they the picked up the green there. That's really nice. That's the kind of stuff I like to happen in watercolor. You're not exactly planning it or <laughs> not planning it at all, in all honesty, but it, it just wonderful, wonderfully. Sometimes you get a good big drip right down your painting like that. Leave it. Leave it. What colors? Ooh, let's try some of this. A <laughs> little of this, a little of that. Pretty much stick with my cobalt here, but I had a little, I think it's a manganese in there someplace. And I'm leaving a lot of white spots to take my brush and just do that. Uh, coloring 103. I hope I can get this dark out now. If you can't just uh, sop it up, it'll work. And here, that's what I wanted to show you too. This is a, a scrubber. <laughs> Not that we ever need one, but uh, if you have a little mistake, now it's hard like an oil painting brush, but if you need to take something out very gently so you don't take the tooth off your painting, off the paper, and you can pretty much get it out. Just another little toy. Um, let's see what color this is. Oh, that's, what, oh, that is Florida. Oh, that's beautiful. A little of this and maybe a little, oh, wow. Let's see what that's, whoo, wow, I'm liking that one, ooh. That's just beautiful. Again, blossom, see it? See that little round thing coming out? That is a blossom. In florals, honestly, it's okay with me. Here's a blossom. It's a floral, who cares? It's good. Okay, I'm gonna come up here, sneaking in to that dark spot. Hello, goodbye dark spot. Oh, that's even good the way it is. Came out fine. Right here, that big pile of paint. Instead of, I'll show you, instead of um, sopping it up, whatever, I'm gonna let it run. Of course, everything else in the paper is gonna run too, but we will worry about that later. Um, this is what watercolor does. This is the fun part of watercolor. When you can 
do this and let it run all over the place. Often I'm not even looking at it. You can turn your paper around 180 degrees and then you turn it back and sometimes you've got really, oh, that's, psh, bingo. There's a little bit of uh, too much paint on the tape. The tape you've got to be careful with because it can backwash and then you're going to have blossoms all over the place. Wow, okay, I think I'll keep going. I'm almost done. I've got to have a darker value here than there. The color doesn't matter, only the dark and light matter. Um, it's okay because this is still dark. I gotta get it darker. Okay, even if I change this, good. That's nice. Oh, I like this background. It's got a lot of, but we had to solve the blue and the blue because this is light, that's dark, that's all you need. You wouldn't see the light if I didn't have the dark up next to it. And this is what I mean by cutting into the petals. You can put your V's right in there. Thank you, Sylvia. And cut out, oh, I love this. I don't wanna get hard edges though. So I'm, I paint pretty fast now. And we'll just finish up over here. Oh, <laughs> I would like that color. I am. This is this is a much more colorful painting than I planned. Was that? See, that's the good part about painting. You're not always sure what's going to happen, and when you get these surprises like this, which is so good, it's super. I mean, who could who could have planned that? That's, now let's check this over here a little bit more. Wow, I like that. And oh. So pretty. Um, I like this. Now, I have just seen something else that happened. This is the good part of watercolor. See that little white right there? See, see that white? That's, that's a gift. I didn't mean it. So I'm going to emphasize it. There's one little bit of white right here pops your eye. Where else can we play this game? All right, I gotta go back to this poor fella. I have left you high and dry. Okay. Well, take a little of this. Okay, dark, dark in here. And I am gonna make a few little petals because it's harder to... <laughs> oh, that's nice, huh? I like that. I love it when a painting comes out, especially when I'm sitting in front of a television camera. You never know. <laughs> awesome. Take advantage of it, it's beautiful. Did I mean this? No. But that's the beauty of it. Look at, I've got a dog. See it, the two ears and the nose and the, never mind. <laughs> you just have to check for these things so they don't catch a, okay, this, I'm happy. Um, oh, yeah. One, I don't like this one little piece here, that's all. That's ready to sign. I happy with that. If you want to put more stems in, like they're coming up here and you know even just coming down here a little bit to make it a little more realistic, you can do that. Up to you. Ah, that was good. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you like the painting. I do. I'll see if I can get it to drip some more. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. Pretty. I love painting hydrangeas. But I have this problem, I love painting anything. So, oh, okay, I am very happy with this. I hope you are. I hope you will someday just take your stuff out and paint with me. I mean, if you can like stop the, whatever it is you're watching and, to, and catch up and, uh, or get, get, just get some ideas from me. And maybe even if you just had something like that to give out for an Easter card or 
birthday card or people love it. They love it. And I will see you next time, and I thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have some happy painting. Thank you.